The story of Swiper is one of sorrows, solitude, and at the core, sympathy. Welcome to The Science Side, a discussion of your favorite parts of pop culture and how they would scientifically work. My name's Brandon, and how well do you really remember Dora the Explorer? The show premiered at the turn of the millennium and has persisted in pop culture ever since. Dora is a tremendous part of my childhood, and that's probably true for a lot of other people. Else, Hollywood wouldn't have dumped an estimated $50 million into making the Dora movie. No, 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 the Dora movie. See, this is Indiana Jones. No, I said the Dora movie? This is Tomb Raider. No, the Dora- Oh, wait, this is the Dora movie? I don't remember Dora being this action-packed, but somehow it feels right. In fact, this modern rendition of Dora may not be as far off from the original children's cartoon as you think. If you've been out of the Dora fandom for a while, allow me to map out the premise. Dora Marquez is a seven-year-old girl who is joined by her best friend, Boots the Monkey, and her travel companions, Backpack and Map, on varied adventures. Throughout her quests, Dora interacts with a cast of reoccurring characters she considers friends, Tico the Squirrel, Isa the Iguana, and Benny the Bull. However, Dora's most interesting relationship is with the antagonist of the show, Swiper the Fox. During nearly every journey Dora and her companions go on, Swiper the Fox always manages to find them and, well, swipe their stuff. That is, unless they can scold him three times before he gets his paws on their possessions. Now as a kid, I completely saw Swiper as the villain of the show, and I think we all did. The other characters certainly treat him like one, but what if I told you that Dora the Explorer was deeper than we ever realized? That Dora was a window into the dark nature of our society's view of mental health? Friends, Swiper is not the villain, he is the victim. Because Swiper is not just a thief, he's a kleptomaniac. That's a word that's thrown around a bunch, so let's get on the same page with this. According to mayoclinic.org, kleptomania is the recurrent inability to resist urges to steal items that you generally don't really need and that usually have little value. Now that sounds like Swiper, but let's really talk this one out, because if Swiper has a serious mental disorder, the ramifications are huge. Move over, Dr. Phil, because we have a new daytime television show that poorly tackles mental health. So. Let's dive into this. Kleptomania has at least five general symptoms that may be included in any given case. To be fair, not every case of kleptomania has all these symptoms, but frankly, I think Swiper is close to a textbook case. Sticking with definitions from Mayo Clinic, let's run it down. One, an inability to resist powerful urges to steal items that you don't need. Yeah, that's Swiper. Whenever Swiper begins his assault, he arguably goes into a trance, and Dora has to repeat a verbal command three times to stop him. Not to mention, Swiper never keeps the items that he steals. He always throws them in the surrounding area, showing he obviously didn't need them. 2. Feeling increased tension, anxiety, or arousal leading up to the theft. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Swiper probably experiences some level of arousal leading up to the theft. I mean, just look at that cheeky grin. That's the grin of a man who's up to something and enjoying every minute of it. 3. Feeling pleasure, relief, or gratification while stealing. I think we can agree Swiper looks pretty pleased with himself when he accomplishes a heist. He doesn't bust out the champagne, sure, but he does bust into fits of laughter at his triumph. 4. Feeling terrible guilt, remorse, self-loathing, shame, or fear of arrest after the theft. 4 is where things get iffy. I will admit, Swiper doesn't seem to feel any guilt or remorse after stealing, but notice the fact that we only ever see him for a few seconds after it happens. We don't see what he's like when confronted with the weight of his actions, at least not usually. We'll come back to this point. And 5. A return of the urges and a repetition of the kleptomania cycle. Oh yeah, Swiper definitely repeats his cycle of theft. That's evident when he's more than ready to steal again in almost every episode he's in. So, with 4 out of 5 symptoms completely fulfilled so far, it's safe to say we have a strong case for Swiper's kleptomania, but we can go further. According to Mayo Clinic, kleptomania often begins during the teen years or in young adulthood, but can start in adulthood or later. That gives us a solid window for the age range Swiper would need to be in order for this disorder to manifest. 
The official Dora fandom page doesn't give a specific age for Swiper, but does give ages for all the other main characters of the show. And thanks to the TV movie, Dora's Christmas Carol Adventure, we can confirm Swiper was a baby when all the other characters were babies. Thus, using the data, we can create a range of possible ages Swiper might be. Based on the ages of the oldest and youngest characters in this shot, Swiper is probably somewhere between 4 and 6 years old at the beginning of the show. At first glance, this is nowhere near the age we expect someone to begin showing kleptomania. But there's one crucial detail that's staring us in the face. Swiper isn't a human, he's a fox. You ever wonder where the scale for dog years came from? That is to say why one regular year is equal to seven dog years? Well, it all comes down to comparing the average lifespans of different species. The average lifespan of a dog is 10 to 13 years, and for a human, the average lifespan is 79 years. So, if we take our human lifespan as the standard equal to regular years, we can divide this lifespan by any animal lifespan to see how they age proportionately. So in this example, 79 years of aging in human life is equal to 10 to 13 years of dog life, since both parties die after that time period. 79 divided by 10 is 7.9, and 79 divided by 13 is 6.1. The average of that range is 7. Thus, for every one year a human ages, Lassie here ages a proportional 7 years biologically. It's all about scaling to each creature's biology. Which brings us back to Swiper. Based on his coloration, Swiper is probably a red fox, which has a potential lifespan of 15 years. Thus, one regular or human year is equal to 5.3 fox years. So if Swiper is 4 to 6 years old in human years, he's biologically 21 to 31 years old right at the age for the onset of kleptomania. Without a doubt, Swiper the Fox does not simply steal from Dora and the others, he is a sympathetic soul living with a mental health disorder. So the question becomes, what is Dora doing about it? The typical treatment for kleptomania is a combination of medication and psychotherapy. Now I know Dora isn't a psychiatrist, but there are steps that friends and family can take to help those living with kleptomania. For one, they can, quote, gently raise their concerns with the loved one. In contrast, everyone in Swiper's life just keeps yelling, Swiper, no swiping. No one ever yells, Swiper, why are you swiping? Another great option is attending a few therapy sessions with the loved one so you can become more familiar with the disorder and how to live with it. Dora has a sentient map, but somehow she can't find her way to a clinic to be there for Swiper? Come on, that's messed up. Or it would be, if it wasn't for one incredibly important moment. During Dora's Christmas Carol adventure, we actually see Swiper exhibit that fourth symptom of kleptomania, remember? Feeling terrible guilt, remorse, self-loathing, shame, or fear of arrest after the theft. In this case, when Santa Claus himself confronts Swiper about stealing Christmas decorations on Christmas, we finally see Swiper post-theft, and he is genuinely remorseful. For a brief moment of time, Swiper opens up and we see the broken heart of a person struggling their whole life made into a villain by those around them. Due to his actions, Santa puts Swiper on the naughty list, and initially, everyone is content with the decision. They've made up their minds. They've had them made for the last four seasons of the show. Well, to their credit, maybe it's the cultural prejudice against foxes, like in Aesop's fables or Japanese folklore. Whatever the influence, the group saw Swiper as one unchangeable thing, a bad person. However, Dora was different. She sticks up for Swiper and offers to help him get better. Together, they go on a therapeutic time travel Christmas adventure where Dora learns as much about Swiper as he does about himself. And in the end, Swiper is actually healthier for it. The rest of the cast later come to empathize with Swiper more, and in the later seasons, we see Swiper managing his kleptomania better, which of course is easier with Dora and the others by his side. Mental health issues are wide and varying, so it's probably safe to say we all have at least one fox or two in our own lives. And at the end of the day, the story of Swiper is a testament to the empathy we should show those individuals. Swiper the Fox is a testament to the healing that happens when we come together, show sympathy, and look, of course, 
on the science side. If you want more nerdy content, head to The Daily Fandom, which is at thedailyfandom.com, where we post everything for fans by fans.